the Lord be with you and, and with, with your, your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory, Glory to, to you, O Lord. Lord. Chapter 1, verses 35 to 42. The next day, John was there again with two of his disciples. And as he watched Jesus walk by, he said, Behold, the Lamb of God. The two disciples heard what he said and followed Jesus. Jesus turned and saw them following him and said to them, What are you searching for? They said to him, Rabbi, which translated means teacher, where are you staying? He said to them, come and you will see. So they went and saw where he was staying. And they stayed with him that day. It was about four in the afternoon. Andrew, the brother of Simon Peter, was one of the two who heard John and followed Jesus. He first found his own brother Simon and told him, we have found the Messiah, which translated means anointed. Then he brought him to Jesus. Jesus looked at him and said, you are Simon, the son of John. You will be called Kephas, which is translated Peter. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, to the Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. My dear sisters and brothers, the scripture readings today presented to us the characteristics of God's call and our response to the call of God. In the first reading we hear God calling Samuel, the great prophet of the Old Testament. The New Testament speaks about Jesus calling Andrew and John, who were the disciples of John the Baptist. And St. Paul, in the second reading, tells us how sacred our bodies are. And these three scripture readings reveal to us four characteristics of God's call and our response. First, the call of God is consistent. God does not give up when we do not discern that call. God continues to call us. God called the boy Samuel. First time, second time, third time. Every time the boy had thought Eli, the priest, was calling him. Because we are told Samuel, the boy, was not familiar with the voice of God. And therefore, he could not recognize the wavelength of the call of the voice of God. But God did not give up. He continues for the third time. That's when Eli, the priest, helps Samuel to discern God's call. If you hear that call again, my boy, respond, speak, Lord, your servant is listening. And God appointed Samuel as the great prophet of the people of God. And the manifold ways God used Samuel to guide the people of God to lead them to salvation experience. The second characteristic of God's call is, God's call is to a personal relationship with him. And therefore, the call of God is not for a casual meeting with him. The call of God is meant for a long-standing relationship with him. 
John the Baptist was standing with the two of his disciples, Andrew and John. John the Baptist pointed to Jesus and said, Here is the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world, who has come to destroy the powers of evil in the world. Andrew and John heard it. They were very impressed. They went after Jesus. After some time, Jesus turns and asks them, What are you searching for? Well, a very deep question. What is the desire of your heart? Why are you coming after me? What are you really searching for? And the two disciples told him, Rabbi, where are you staying? They wanted a deeper relationship with Jesus. Jesus also wanted a long-standing relationship with them. And Jesus invited them, come and see. And John tells us, they went and they saw and they stayed with him. And that experience of John was so life-changing. John remembers every instance of it, every moment of it, because John says that it was four o'clock in the afternoon. After years, John remembers even the exact time when Jesus called them. The call of God is so overwhelming. It's so life-changing. It does not remain for a moment. It remains in our hearts. The way Jesus called John and Andrew, and the way they responded opened up to a great relationship between Jesus and the two disciples. In Mark, we are told, Mark chapter 3, verse 13, the call of the disciples. St. Mark tells us, Jesus called them to be with them. In the Bible, to be with someone is a very deep meaning. Jesus called them to be with him, to belong to him, to belong to the master. And that is a clear way of telling us Jesus wanted the disciples to be part of his life, to be part of his mission, to be always with him, to belong to him. Our call is the same. A call is for an intimate relationship with Jesus that we may surrender a life to him and follow him wherever he asks us to go. And that is the second characteristic of the call of God, a call for a personal relationship with him. And the third characteristic is the call of God is always for a specific mission. When Jesus calls Simon Peter, Jesus tells him, I will make you fishers of men to catch men and women, to invite them into the same relationship to which the disciples were called. And in Mark chapter 3, verse 13 onwards, we are told, Jesus called them to be with him and to be sent out to preach the word and to cast out the powers of evil. The word of God is to be preached to the ends of the earth and the powers of evil are to be cast out and that's what Jesus called them for a specific mission. The fourth characteristic of the call of God is to keep our bodies pure and sacred. And that's what St. Paul is telling us 
in the letter to the Corinthians. In the Corinthian church, there was a problem. Immorality was rampant in that city, port city that it was. And St. Paul is warning the Christians not to follow the ways of the world around, but to be different because you are called for a special mission. And therefore, you must keep your bodies pure and clean. Because you should remember that your bodies are the members of the body of Christ. And again, you must remember, Paul said, your bodies are the temples of the Holy Spirit. Spirit of God dwells in your bodies. This is an all-time warning to all the disciples, to everyone called by God to be different from the ways of the world. In the world, we see so much of immorality, so much of uncleanness. But the disciples of Jesus must be different. They must regard their bodies holy and sacred. I remember speaking to a woman. She was an engineer, but she was paralyzed during childbirth. And she was confined to the bed. I was told during a retreat that she wanted to see me. So I went there. And I had thought that she would be a sad person. She was calling me to complain against God for what happened to her. But when, she, when I went to the room, I saw her smiling, so happy, and talking to me in a very joyous manner. She said to me, Father, I was very active in the church. I had a profession as an engineer, but I found time to be active in the church. And I used to head the pious associations of the church. And she said, but now, but now I am called by God for a different style of living. I'm not able to get up and walk. I'm not able to go to the church. I'm not able to do anything for Jesus outside of this room. But in this room, I recognize the call of God. I'm called to be holy, to belong to Jesus. Therefore, she said, all my inconvenience, all that is gone wrong with my body, I offer to the Lord. And I tell him, Lord, here I am. Your disciple, I want to belong to you. I want to belong to Jesus at every moment of my life. I can hear the voice of Jesus resounding in my heart. Come and follow me. I'm following Jesus. And I know this is God's will for me. Since this is God's will for me, I, I follow Jesus here lying on the bed. Then she said, this is a relationship with my Jesus. I have no complaints. Earlier, when I was healthy, when I was mobile, I went about doing things in the church. But now, God has called me to remain in my bed. And I know I'm connected with Jesus, and Jesus is connected with me. Jesus is connected with every inconvenience, every pain of my body, every impossibility of my life. Jesus is connected with me, and I want to be connected with him. And then she said, I have a mission. Earlier, my mission was to run about doing good to the people in the parish. But now, now I'm here 
lying down but i'm connected to all the sick people all the sad people all the broken families when i come to know that someone has a problem someone is in trouble i would ring them up i'm able to move my hands so i use my phone to ring them up to speak to them to console them to comfort them and since people know i'm here for them they would call me up all the time there's a call on the phone i i would respond comforting them i would respond um giving them god's word i'm busy in my mission in my mission leading the people to god and i find a great satisfaction perhaps more a satisfaction that i had when i was running around there are people who need me jesus needs me to guide them to console them to comfort them and i do it willingly and joyfully then she said father now i realize the sacredness of my body i'm here my body is lying on the bed but i offer my body to my jesus all the time and i want to experience the holy spirit in my body i would experience what st paul says you are the members of the body of christ and i would keep my body sacred and pure offering myself to my god my dear sisters and brothers when we are called by god in whatever situation we are let us experience that call resounding in our hearts to belong to jesus and when i belong to jesus i would not do anything to hurt him i would not even dare to commit a sin against him i want to be faithful to my god because my god is calling me to be his own and i must belong to him who do i belong to a big question today there's a problem of identity what is my identity of course we speak of our family i'm a i'm a husband i'm a wife i'm a father i'm a mother yes there is a a temporal identity but basically ultimately our identity is to belong to jesus i belong to him he's my right groom as the great saints teach us he's the bride groom and we are the bride of jesus as a bride is connected to the bride groom i'm connected to jesus i belong to him and i want to belong to him and i want to think of him all the time i want to surrender to him everything going on in my life there are moments there are problems in our lives oh sure there are hardships we go through but i know every pain i have is to be offered to my jesus and also i must i must fulfill a mission the mission i am given by the lord a mission to spread the kingdom wherever i am my dear sisters and brothers let us accept our christianity as a call as a response as a mission as an invitation to keep my life sacred and pure let us understand this our lives are important for god wherever we are whatever we are doing our lives are important for god and god wants to do great things through us and let us let's be open to him and when we are open to him when we respond to him he will do great things through us we cannot waste our life we cannot waste our life doing whatever we want now i want to do what god wants of me to do and that will make our lives 
beautiful. Amen.